The last thing I did on my color logo is I made another duplicate and I made it just a gradient from warm to, to cool. And then I dissolved it with my layer style at 62% opacity and blended that on top of everything. So it has a little bit more of an overall variation. But if you look at it, all that subtlety is there. All the different colors, the oranges, the purples, even the greens and the blues are in this design, along with a slightly cool colored drop shadow, along with all the, the noise and the texture. And when I really zoom in, you'll see the pixels because this is a raster file, but it's a raster file made from smart objects. So no matter what size I make this file, I can make this 30 inches by 40 inches at 350 pixels per inch, it would always be perfectly clean because they are vector shapes with layer styles adding the color. Now there's, I said there in the last video, there's one example when you might not wanna keep something as a smart object, as a vector. And that's if you want one specific thing to be a certain color instead of the whole thing. So for instance, if I, if I wanted this shape to be gold, I'm gonna lasso around it and then duplicate it from one of my vector layers, Command J. By duplicating just a part of the smart object, you're automatically rasterizing it. So this is now locked into this Photoshop program at this size and at this resolution. I'm gonna bring it to the top. I'm gonna to change it to normal mode at 100%. I'm gonna change the effects and make it bright yellow, for an example. Now you can also do this kind of coloring within Illustrator, but I find it so much more flexible and useful to do it as layer styles in Photoshop and to just keep your logo as a, a nice black logo. Now, how would I make it look gold? So often I'll use kind of a bright, fully, fairly light, slightly low opacity fill, and then I'll use a gradient, and I'll use one of their, their gradients that's kind of coppery or more metallic. And then I'll just play with that overlay color if I want it to look less like pale gold and more like orange gold. I do that, and then I can play with the gradient. I can play with the scale, how sharp it is, the angle of it. And I can really try to dial that in. So that's the only instance where you might have something that's rasterized as part of your logo design. All right. Now we're all, we're all done with, with our color and our black and white variation. Just to remind you how to save it for Canvas, turn off the background, but leave all your effects. And then I'm going to say file, save a copy in order to save it as a PNG. But make sure you're not overwriting your black PNG. So I'm going to write the name as color instead of black. Ooh. So that, that was my old color version. This is my new color version. I like it better. There it is. So often seeing how it works on the different backgrounds, on white, on gray, on black, that will help you make good decisions as to your color variations. Now I want to save my, my black version, right? But I can choose the offset that works well for it. And I like this kind of grainy white offset. So that's going to be my black logo. I turn off the background yet again. And I can save that for my black logo. You just need your refined sketch, your black logo, and your color variation.
or you can just turn in your black logo just straight, nice and clean. It's whatever you want to print. Okay. So now that I have those as PNGs, I can put those into Canvas. I already have my, my black shape logo. You can add more than these three if you want. So you can add a black shape logo, a black shape logo with a white offset, and then a color. But I'm just going to post the basic. So for my color variation, let me upload that. Remember you want a PNG so it doesn't fill in the background. If you saved it as a JPEG, it would fill in the empty space with white. And so you have to make sure to turn off that background. Come on, where is it? There it is, a little slow. Then you want to shrink it so it's just not too huge within Canvas. And we're not going to do a presentation critique of these because you're required to print one of these. So these are going to be part of the midterm gallery critique, either your black shape logo or your color logo. And you can kind of see how even a really subtle drop shadow helps it stand out a little bit within the, the Canvas discussion board. So if you're required to print one of these, now we have to do something new. We have to make these print ready. To make something print ready means that it's all formatted perfectly for printing. We've already sized it and set the resolution correctly. So let's say I want to save my color version. I'm going to turn on all the effects and the white background or not the white background, either way, because empty space in Photoshop will print white. But then I am going to say layer flatten image. When we print, we don't want to print from a multi-layered image because it takes up more memory than it needs. And the more memory a file takes, the more the printer has to buffer. And you don't want the printer to stop while it's printing because then the ink cartridges have to start and stop and that can leave little uh, machine lines. So we want to flatten it, not just to save memory, but to make it easier to print. And then we don't want to save it as a PSD once we flattened it, right? Not only does flattening it rasterize it, but flattening, flattening makes it so we can't make any corrections to it easily. So we need to save it as a different file type. So I say file save as, not save as a copy, because this is what's called an archive format. And this is on the midterm. There are working formats. Working formats are the kind of files that are ideal to keep working on. The working formats we've used in this class are PSD files for raster and AI files for vector. Then there are online formats, which are ideal for posting online, but they do not keep the quality high because they're loss compressions. Those are JPEG, PNG, and GIF files. Now we have a new file type, which is called a TIFF. T-I-F or T-I-F-F. -F. This is an archive format. It means it can be opened by any imaging program, but it is not a loss compression. So I'm also going to change the name. I'm just going to add capital P and R, and I ask you guys to do the same so that I know when you choose that something is print ready. So PR for print ready or ready for public relations, right? And I'll save that just like anything else. But are you going to get an extra option after you hit save? These are your TIFF options. And this is why TIFF is the best archive format. It will say image compression options. Do I want none? Do I want LZW? Do I want zip? Or do I want JPEG? Now, you guys are probably familiar with zip. You, it like compresses everything into a folder that can be unzipped. It's just a pain in the butt. It, it's good for sending, but it's not good for storing. JPEG you're used to. JPEG is a loss compression where you can set the quality of it, and it's like rounding the data up, up or down. So we don't want that. If we're going to store this, it's finished. It's ready to print. We don't want it to change as we open it and close it. 
So what we want is LZW. LZW is a miracle. The series on HBO called Silicon Valley is all based on a data compression algorithm that's based on LZW. And it's a lossless compression format. It means it makes the file smaller, but it doesn't lose any quality, no matter how much you open it, change it, resave it. So whenever we use TIFF, we always want to use LZW. You can say none, but then a TIFF is almost as big as a Photoshop file. So LZW goes with TIFF. It is a lossless compression format. It is a beautiful miracle. If you want to get a tattoo of LZW, you can. All right. So now I have it saved. I've decided I want to print my color version. Here it is, PR. I'll usually mark those with blue. It's a TIFF. It's perfect quality. It is flattened. This is exactly the resolution I want. It is raster. We print raster files. But it was generated from a vector. So every edge will be perfectly even. What do I do with that print ready file? I go to the home page of our course. And I go to links. And I go to the class Dropbox. I'm not going to open that up because this is a public YouTube. I don't want to give away our credentials, right? But in the class Dropbox, I think it will remember me and log me in automatically here. No, of course it won't. All right, so I'm going to stop recording. If you're signed into Dropbox, you'll see this using our class credentials. Dismiss. <laughs> Uh, you're going to go right to digital art class files. And you're going to go right to this folder that's flattened TIFF files to print. That's reminding you how to make something print ready. We open that. And you'll see a folder with your name under our semester code. You'll also see a little PDF that you can view about how to make something print ready. It's very simple. You open your best PSD version. This will be for any of your projects. You flatten that image once it looks the way you want it to look. You want to make sure that it's at the right resolution and physical size that you want to print. So we're going to do 8 by 10 for the midterm, and you want it to be at least 300 pixels per inch. And then you save that flattened and resized PSD file as a TIFF format. And when it asks you to check compression, you check LZW. And then you upload your, your print-ready TIFF file to your folder in Dropbox. So I'm going to do that right now. I've got my own instructor folder. And it's just as simple as drag and dropping it in. Just make sure it's the PR TIFF. Will anything set fire if you put a PSD into Dropbox? No, but it's going to take up a lot of space. We don't want it to. And then before we print it, we have to flatten it And anyway. So better to do this at the front end. And it makes you realize the resolution, the physical size. And so the next step to make things print ready is I want to pick my other projects from the semester. And I want to do my emoji from exercise two. I like that a lot. So I'm going to open up my best PSD emoji. And now I have to go to image size. And it's beyond 8 by 10, I have to make it fit within 8 by 10 now. So what I can do then, without changing it at all, is just uncheck resample. And then its limiting factor is its height, right? So I'm going to make its height 8. And then its resolution goes up, but it's still above 300 and 8 by 10. So I say, OK, it doesn't change a thing. Now to see how it would look on a mat, in a mat at 8 by 10, I'm going to change the canvas size. So I go to image canvas size, and I change it from being 8 tall and 8.2 wide to being 10 wide. And now I have what it would look like within my mat. Does that make sense? So now I'm going to flatten it, layer, flatten image. The empty space will fill with white. If I like how that looks, I'm going to say file save as, not save a copy, save as. I don't want to overwrite my Photoshop. Instead, I'm going to make this my print ready file. 